Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Ankit Parak and I work as a consultant in pediatric pulmonology, allergy and sleep medicine at Children's Chest Clinic, New Delhi. In this video, we talk about a very common condition which is called as laryngomalacia. Now, laryngomalacia is considered to be one of the most common causes of noisy breathing in young babies. Now, this noisy breathing is a very common problem which we find with young babies. They can produce many types of sounds. One could be nasal sound. The other could be a snoring sound like this. But sometimes they can produce sounds like this. This is a sound which is called as strident. And laryngomalacia is considered to be the commonest reason for strident in young babies. So let's understand what laryngomalacia means. Now if we look at the airway of a child, then it is divided into three parts. The uppermost part is called as supraglottis, then you have the glottis and then you have the infraglottis and the windpipe also known as the trachea. Now the supraglottis part of the airway has a few structures as shown in the diagram. It has an epiglottis, it has other cartilages known as the arytenoids and an area epiglottic folds. Now in laryngomalacia, the area epiglottic folds they are short and that leads to floppiness of the epiglottis. So this epiglottis which is firm like this it becomes floppy. It becomes very floppy. Especially when the child breathes deeply, the child is active, the child is crying and that leads to sound which is known as strident. Now, how do we diagnose a child with laryngomalacia? So usually uh, parents would present to us that uh, doctor my child has been having this noise in breathing since very early age and, and, and I am a bit worried about this sound. So that is the usual way parents would come to us. Now if a child has noisy breathing we would evaluate that child in the OPD. We will look at the growth of the child, uh, we would look at the respiratory symptoms we will we'll examine the chest of the child and then we decide what needs to be done. The most important investigation to confirm a laryngomalacia is known as laryngoscopy or a bronchoscopy. A laryngoscopy or bronchoscopy is a simple procedure where a very thin tube known as a bronchoscope which has a camera attached is gently passed through the nose of the child after application of some jelly. Now with this, we can clearly look at the, the supraglottic part, as I said, the epiglottis, the, the area epiglottic folds, the arytenoids, but we can look at the rest of the airway as well. So we can look at the vocal cords, whether they are functioning properly or not. And we can also look at the lower part of the airway, the, the infraglottic or the subglottic part, the, the trachea and the, and, and the main bronchi. Now in, in a child with laryngomalacia, the epiglottis turns floppy as I told, it becomes omega shaped and sometimes it can be sucked in to the glottis when the child is breathing deeply. It is quite important to understand that laryngomalacia is only one of the cause of strider in a child. So out of 100 babies, 60 to 70 percent will have laryngomalacia. But the rest 30 to 40 percent will have other problems. Now, these problems could be things like cyst in the airway, valicular cyst. These problems could be like problems with the local vocal cords known as vocal cord palsy or they can be a narrowing in the airway 
usually in the subglottis called as subglottic stenosis. There could be blood vessels in the subglottis which is called as a subglottic hemangioma. There could be narrowing in the trachea or floppiness of the trachea called as tracheomalacia. So laryngomalacia although is the commonest cause of strider in children, there are other causes which needs to be looked into. And hence it is extremely important that laryngomalacia is diagnosed properly with a laryngoscopy or a bronchoscopy so that we are sure what we are dealing with. Now if a child has laryngomalacia then what is the usual treatment? So in general most children with laryngomalacia do not require any specific treatment and gradually with age they would mature and the, and the cartilages will become more sturdy and the floppiness would decrease. This usually starts happening around 9, nine months to 12 months of age and by the age of 18 months to 2 years most of the children will grow out of this problem. But there would be less than 5% children where problems would be seen. So what problems you should watch for? So if a child has real difficulty in breathing, especially if they have retractions on the chest, that is a very important sign. Or if they have difficulty in feeding, if they become blue while feeding, uh, if they seem to be choking during feeds, these are important signs or if they are not growing properly. So these are the signs which we need to look for. These are danger signs in a child with laryngomalacia and if these signs are there then these group of children might require some surgical procedure known as area peclotoplasty. So if your baby has a noisy breathing do get in touch with a pediatric pulmonologist to know what is the exact cause of noisy breathing in your child and what best should be offered. For more information you can log on to our website ankitparak.com. Thank you.